Happy Fourth of July weekend and welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. This week we celebrate America and look forward. What does being an American mean to you? Oh, pride and patriotism is just oozing today. We're one on one with California Senator Alex Padilla as he swears in new citizens, talks hot button issues. Plus, right now we have to act and act fast. President Biden adopts a wildfire plan laid out by California Congressman Josh Harder. He's with us. And everybody wants to be an American. A special conversation with some of the newest Americans, as the issue is, starts right now. Broadcasting across California, California's only statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. And thanks for spending part of your holiday weekend with us. I'm Alex Michelson, and welcome to The Issue Is. This week, we speak one-on-one -on -one with California Senator Alex Padilla aboard the USS Iowa. It's a battleship that's now a museum and home to a special ceremony honoring America's newest citizens. Padilla helping to swear in these new Americans and also reflecting on his own parents, a cook and a housekeeper from Mexico who once took part in this same ceremony and ended up raising California's first Latino United States Senator. Senator Padilla, welcome back to The Issue Is. Great to see you in person Thank for you. a change for the as, first time as well. In a long time. Yeah. Good to see you. And we're, we're on a battleship. Uh, we're swearing in new United States citizens. It's 4th of July weekend this weekend. Um, what does being an American mean to you? Oh, pride and patriotism is just oozing today, right? It's uh, my first opportunity to celebrate a naturalization ceremony as a U.S. Senator. Extra move, not just because of the battleship, but to see active duty service members going through the naturalization process, becoming full-fledged citizens of uh, uh, our country. It's uh, can't help but be inspired. I mean, it's an emotional thing. I was tearing up a little bit seeing some of their reactions for you. How are you reflecting on your parents and on your story and what it means for you to be able to be here and do this? Exactly. I mean, it's not just a policy that this is symbolic of for me. It's a personal journey. You know, my parents went through a ceremony very similar to this uh, a couple of decades ago. My, uh, my parents, like so many others, have come from Mexico in pursuit of the American dream here in the United States, we worked hard, raised a family, bought a home, uh, lived out their American dream. Uh, that's the history of our nation. And uh, here I am, just one generation later, serving in the United States Senate. Right, that's a, a, a tremendous honor, a tremendous uh, responsibility that I carry to bring our perspective to the deliberations of the Senate. But I know each and every new citizen here has a family with an equally inspiring story. And I know for you, you're thinking about quizzing your parents with flashcards. And I remember sitting with my dad from time to time on the couch in our living room, going through the flashcards. Do you remember that? Who was the first president of the United States? Why are there 50 stars on our flag? Talk to us about that and also, you know, what they did for a living and now what you're doing for a living. Yeah, look, when my parents came here, they knew they were in pursuit of a better life. You know, becoming citizens was the last thing on their mind. Frankly, it took them nearly 30 years. And it was the politics of California in the 90s. Remember Proposition 187 that finally got them to realize that uh, there's no going back to the home country. They had kids here. They were, you know, uh, paying off the home here, uh, grandkids on the way. Their future was here. Uh, and uh, sitting uh, in the living room with my dad, going through those flashcards like a lot of them do in preparation for the test or uh, getting my mom sort of mentally prepared for her interview uh, before the final step in the process. Uh, it's, it was our revenge, frankly, for all the times that our parents told us, do your homework, do your homework. <laughs> we turned it around on them. Mom, dad, you gotta do your homework, get ready for your test. And uh, you know, I, I start by not just congratulating everybody on their new citizenship, but the courage that it takes to leave a home country, come to United States, work hard to decide to become a citizen, go through the process, which is not easy, not cheap, uh, but that's the level of commitment and pride that's reflected in today's celebration. Well, let's talk for a moment about that process, right? Because that process is not that easy. And there's a lot of people that think there needs to be changes when it comes to the immigration process. They see images of what's happening at the border right now and they see a crisis. What do you see when you see what's happening at the border right now? Is it a crisis and what needs to be changed? Look, I think uh, uh, what we need to do is kind of break down our immigration conversations 
into important distinct uh, sections. The situation at the border look, happens every year, every springtime when the weather is getting better, people come seeking asylum because they're not battling a tough summer, they're not battling a tough winter. So we need to reinstate a, a sane asylum system that's not cruel, but is humane. But that's a different conversation than uh, how do we do justice for the millions and millions of undocumented immigrants that have been in the United States, uh, contributing to the economy, working as a essential workers, but there's even more numbers of legal permanent residents in the United States eligible to become citizens, but whether it's the years long wait, the cost of the application itself that uh, can become prohibitive for so many. But bottom line, we know that immigration is good for the country. Uh, it has helped, you know, not just the, the story of our nation, but our economy uh, over generations, and we need to do better for immigrants. While I've got you in person, a couple other quick questions just about policy and what you're doing in the Senate. The big topic right now is infrastructure reform. This concept of a bipartisan deal that's been reached. Do you support that framework of the bipartisan deal? Are you behind that? Look, I, I, I definitely support the investments that the bipartisan deal seeks to invest in, but I, I'll immediately say it's not enough. There's other areas of our infrastructure that need equal priority uh, and large investment. To me, it is not a debate whether child care, for example, is essential to our economy. It's really hard for parents to go to work if you don't have somewhere safe to leave your kids when they're not in school. Uh, so if we want to invest in our economy and position uh, our, our country for success in the decades ahead, we have to be bigger and bolder than just this bipartisan deal. So it sounds like you only would support two bills at once? We have to do more than just what this bipartisan deal seeks. And one of the other big things is the filibuster. You've been very vocal in the fact that you think that the filibuster needs to go, that it's impeding progress right now. Any update on that i mean what are the conversations like behind the scenes because now we're seeing for example the for the people act go down because of a filibuster right look if there was any question before look what's happened you know th this year already the fact that we haven't had infrastructure done is because of the filibuster the fact that immigration reform proposals haven't been adopted because of the filibuster well we can't even protect our fundamental right to vote or establish an independent bipartisan commission to get to the root cause of the january 6th insurrection it's just further evidence the filibuster uh it needs to go we need to move forward and we should begin at least with protecting our voting rights is the senior senator behind that from California, Dianne Feinstein? I, I think there's been evolution from a number of senators yeah. that have been a little bit more resistant to eliminate or at least reform the filibuster, but uh, I'm hopeful that in the months ahead we're going to make more progress. And lastly, your son, Diego, is here with you today to witness this ceremony of all these people becoming United States citizens. What does being an American mean to you, Diego? Awesome. Awesome. What do you want him to learn from this moment? Oh my gosh, yes, I'm blessed, uh, you know, with uh, uh, three boys uh, that my wife and I are uh, trying to raise as gentlemen. Part of the opportunity I had was to share with him how grandma and grandpa went through a ceremony like this some years ago because of their uh, uh, immigrant uh, experience coming to the United States and becoming a citizen. If he can uh, take away just a little bit of the, the inspiration, the motivation, uh, the patriotism that we feel today, I think uh, it'll serve him well when he starts the first grade. <laughs> Great to see you and happy 4th of July to you Thank and your family. You. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator. All right. Appreciate it. Our thanks to Senator Padilla and Diego Padilla. We'll hear from those new citizens a little later in the show, but up next, Congressman Josh Harder, who represents the Central Valley and helped to change the federal firefighter pay this week. We'll talk about that and more with him next. But as we go to break, a moment to celebrate the World Series champion Los Angeles Dodgers at the White House this week with President Biden and California's own Vice President Harris. Look at our boys, they clean up nice. Congrats. They deserve to be paid and paid good wages. You know that old expression, God made man, then he made a few firefighters? Well, it's true. This week, President Biden met with his cabinet and virtually convened Western state governors, including California's Governor Newsom, to talk about ways to more effectively fight wildfires. And he made a policy announcement largely due to this week's guest. Democratic Congressman Josh Harder represents the Central Valley in Congress. His home is in Turlock. He's a fifth generation Californian, a descendant of peach farmers. He's a member of the Agriculture and Appropriations Committees 
And I just found out he's 34 years old, like me, which is making me feel very unaccomplished. Uh, Congressman Harder, <laughs> welcome to The Issue Is. Well, thanks so much for having me. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, let's get to one of the big developments this week when it comes to firefighters. You want to show some video of this. You recently have been pointing out that federal firefighters in California making just over $13 an hour working here, even though the minimum wage in the state, $15 an hour. So essentially you're making more working at McDonald's than as a firefighter. You got that message to the president, and this week he announced a change. Yeah. Uh, look, this is a no brainer. We are heading into what could be the worst fire season in California history. And yet we have fire trucks literally sitting idle in parking lots. That doesn't make any sense. And it's no mystery why we have a huge firefighter shortage across the state. It's because, as you said, we're paying federal firefighters $28,000 a year. Uh, so we worked with the Biden administration, with Republicans and Democrats alike. Uh, and this week, we're able to announce uh, a pay raise for our federal firefighters. There's still more work to be done, but this is a huge effort forward to make sure that we can keep our community safe, not just for this fire season, but for the future. Yeah, so they're going to be making at least $15 an hour, plus be getting bonuses. The goal is to have it be significantly higher than that and also to hire more firefighters and have them work longer because, as we've seen, fire season is no longer just a season. Yeah. Yeah, look, and part of this is making sure that we don't just have folks that are here for a couple of months, but year round. And so this is important to make sure that we have enough folks on the ground to keep our community safe, not just for the 15,000 firefighters that it's going to be affecting, but for every single person who has to pick up the phone when their community is affected and wants to make sure that there's somebody on the other end of the line. I got to admit that we originally booked you on this show in advance to try to put white pressure on the White House to do this, and then they did it. So, I mean, I'll take the credit. No, uh, we spoke with uh, the, hey, the... we're going to come on the show every week if yeah, that's what uh, it takes to actually I, take I, some action. I spoke with the White House's deputy climate advisor this week, and he actually did give you credit for it. Here's some of this. Congressman Harder's been an incredible leader, uh, and, you know, I think his, his district um, is... Uh, tells the story of the crisis of the West. Meaning that we have seen in, in your district some of the challenges with climate change. I mean, obviously, hiring more firefighters is a bit of a short-term solution to this. Big picture, though, we got major ch climate challenges ahead. How do we deal with that? Yeah, look, I mean, climate change is not an issue that's just affecting the polar bears in the Arctic somewhere else. Drought and fires are affecting every single Californian every single day. Uh, I had a chance to, to go in a helicopter over some of the 300,000 acres that burned last year, uh, right in Stanislaus County over the Del Puerto and Diablo Grande Canyon, and it was horrifying. When it comes to fires, that means we need the people, we need the equipment. We're also working to get more planes to make sure that we can actually uh, help folks drop fire retardants on some of these fires to help prevent them from getting big. And most of all, we need leadership. We need to make sure that we are preventing the root causes of what's getting these fires bigger and bigger every single year and trying to limit them to hundreds of acres instead of hundreds of thousands. All right. On this show, we also like to get to know our guests. And there's a lot of people, obviously, in your district that know you well in the Central Valley. But there may be some folks outside of the Central Valley that aren't that familiar with you. You're a graduate of Stanford and Harvard, a successful venture capitalist and someone who has taught at the local uh, junior college in Modesto. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you became a congressman so young. Yeah, look, I never thought I'd go into politics. I love my job working in the private sector, working briefly as a teacher. But the reality is, is most of the biggest problems that we're dealing with across our country today, whether it's COVID, whether it's climate change, these are problems that aren't of just caused by a lack of scientists or a lack of business people. In many ways, the, the root cause of why we're dealing with them is a lack of political leadership. And this was most clear for me. My brother was born 10 weeks premature, would have lost his health insurance if the Affordable Care Act was repealed. And so I saw my member of Congress vote to do just that and decided to get on into the race to try to see what we could do to fix things. And you defeated that Republican member of Congress and flipped a district in California that had traditionally been red, won a second time back in 2020. Um, so on this show, we, we like to have a little bit of fun in getting to know you. We play a game called Personal Issues, which is where we put 30 seconds up on the clock, lightning round, get to know some of your favorites. All right, you ready for the, the real hard part of this interview? I don't know if I'm ready, but I'll give it a try. Okay. What is your favorite TV show? Uh, right now, I really love Community. 
All right, very, community college. Very good. <laughs> Favorite book? Uh, Lord of the Rings. I'm a huge nerd, so right. that, that hits it. <laughs> Stephen Colbert is with you there. Favorite sports team? Uh, look, I mean, here in California, we got to be uh, big fans of the Giants. That's required in Northern California. Stanford or Harvard? <laughs> uh, look, you got to go undergrad, go Cardinal, go Stanford. <laughs> Favorite meal? Uh, look, we have the best tacos in the in the entire country here in Modesto. Come anytime. What's your favorite kind of music? Uh, I listen to uh, a lot of, of sort of rock, a lot of uh, a lot of reggae as well. Uh, so pr probably a big fan of uh, pop and rock. Uh, when I look at you, I think reggae. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Well, uh, so uh, you're also a drummer in your spare time. We've got some some images of that. Who who are some of your bi biggest musical inspirations? You're going to be playing soon in town, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll be playing with uh, with Mo Band, which has been around 150 plus years here in Modesto. Uh, come by and, uh, and 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 check us out. It'll be a huge concert in the park. But you know, I grew up listening to folks like uh, the Dave Matthews Band, Carter Buford, some of the really important uh, influences on 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 my life. Life. And uh, I've, I've, my, my skills have atrophied a little bit in, in politics, but it's good to get back to it every now and again. <laughs> I hear you're also a fan of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Of course, their extraordinary drummer, the mighty, mighty Max Weinberg. So we, we end with glory days as we, as we celebrate the 4th of July. Up next, we've got a special surprise cameo. But as we go to break, we want to enjoy the congressman's air drumming skills, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. What do you got? Get it done. What's that beat look like? Please welcome Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> last week, we told you about a love connection made at our town hall event last year at USC with then Mayor Pete Buttigieg, our stage manager, Matt, met his now fiance, Melissa, on the behind the scenes crew at USC. Last week, we surprised Matt and had him join us on set. I owe you because if this show didn't exist, I never would have met her. Well, Matt is back for another surprise this week. Matt, welcome back to The Issue Is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> Uh, so what was that like for Melissa? Because she, she didn't even know this was going to be featured, and she watched this last week. She, she loved it. She teared up, happy tears. Yeah. Uh, all of her family watched, and it went around. Uh, yeah. and, and I didn't realize this until you told me this. Melissa pointed this out. We want to show this video of that moment where Pete Buttigieg comes out. And look to your right on the screen. So the person that is pulling the curtain right there is Melissa. Right? And it was emotional for her seeing that. She pointed that out. Yeah. She was the one who saw it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that at the, at the time. So Melissa was not the only one watching The Issue Is last week. An Issue Is viewer from Washington sent us this video. Hey, Matt and Melissa, congratulations. I was uh, really touched to hear that uh, I might have had a little something to do with your story and wishing you all the very best. How wild is that? Secretary Hi. Buttigieg. I can't believe he took the time out of his extremely busy schedule to, yeah. to, to do that. That's, that's yeah. really nice of him. It's pretty cool. And, and a, a special reaction on Twitter as well from his husband, Chastin Buttigieg. I think you may have that. seen yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Love loves to love love. <laughs> Congrats to you two. I mean, pretty cool. I hope they come to the wedding. <laughs> Open invite. Bring the Secret Service. Or at least send a gift, right? Yeah. <laughs> at least send a present. That's pretty cool. Now, Matt, you have now sat in that chair two weeks in a row. This is becoming a recurring thing. But you have not sat in that chair the most. You know who sat in that chair the most. Because you've been with us since week one on this show. Who's I think that? I know. Who's Gloria. That? Gloria. Gloria. Of course, Allred. Gloria Allred, whose life story is profiled in the Netflix film Seeing Allred. That is Gloria dancing with drag queens dressed as Gloria. <laughs> Don't see it all red. She was the first guest to ever dance on our show. She insists that we dance every time that she's on. She's been on more than anyone else in the history of the show. A and this week on Fox 11 Los Angeles, we marked a big birthday for Gloria this weekend. Take a look. 
Gloria is turning 80 years wow. old. 80 years old this weekend, which nobody I can believe. Woman. Nobody no. can believe. Gloria, you're, you're our most frequent guest in our political show, The Issue Is. You've been such a special person to us. Thank you for fighting the good fight. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you so much. And people say, God, Gloria, are you going to really say your true age? And you know what I say? Women, we should get a medal for surviving. So be proud <laughs> of your age. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> Gloria, thank you amazing. so much, Alex. <laughs> Happy birthday. Gloria, I can't wait until we can dance together again in person. Up next, a final word from America's newest citizens and a great reminder of our blessings on this 4th of July weekend. And speaking of, Matt clearly celebrating with this outfit. I mean, that is that is aggressive. <laughs> Aggressively America. Yeah, it's, it's subtle. <laughs> Today! Thank you, Neil Diamond. Thank you, Matt. Congrats again. Sweet land of liberty. The Newsom recall election will be held on September 14th. Something tells me you may hear a thing or two about that on this show before then. But let's end this week with something that hopefully brings us together. My favorite holiday, the 4th of July. It's a time where we light fireworks to celebrate America's independence. This week, while on board the USS Iowa, I got to speak with brand new American citizens as they were being naturalized. Let's close out with their answers to the question, what does being an American mean to you? You know, it's a, a dream come true. Freedom of speech, you have the freedom to practice whatever you, religion you choose to do. I can vote and I can't. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons why I'm like happy to do this. Everything you want to be, you have to be. All my opportunities, everything that I've done, I've done in the United States. So I, I owe a great debt to this country. It's the best country in the world to live in, hands down. And it's such a privilege to become part of it.